What is up guys, my name is Max, welcome to FL Tips online school with top tier music production courses and sounds. Today you'll get to know why mid-side EQ is so important for amazing sounding mixes and how you can actually use it to improve your tracks. Let's dive in. Now, as you might know already, in our music world we have mono and stereo audio. Mono is one signal, stereo is two different signals. Now, different because if you play the same signal through a stereo system, so like your headphones or a pair of speakers, you will still get one mono audio. It's just played throughout two speakers. Mono has this feature that because it's just one signal, we cannot get any phase cancellation issues that are caused by two different signals playing at once in stereo audio. Not always, but happens sometimes, especially when you take stereo audio, so two different signals, and merge it into one mono signal. So there are many ways people describe things, but just for the sake of this video, do not mistake signal with audio. Signal is always one, audio can have many signals, most of the time two of them, so stereo. So. What is mid-side? It's not so obvious because audio doesn't have mid and side signal. If we have stereo signal, we have only left and the right signals. So mid-side is actually an encoding process that takes stereo signal, so left and right signals and separates them into one mono mid channel and one side stereo channel. All right, so you will need to listen on stereo system right now. Look at this. Banana. Banana. Apple. I'm saying there are three names of different fruit and just try to say which one is on what channel. Banana. 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 So mid is we take left and right channel and merge them together into one. So this is our mid signal. Banana. 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 You can pretty much hear the same thing, but just only in mono. And now our side signal. There's no banana anymore. And if mid signal is left and right merged into one, side channel is left minus right. So on the left channel, we had banana and apple. And on the right channel, we had banana and kiwi. So if we make an equation of apple plus banana minus banana plus kiwi, we are just left with apple and kiwi. So this is L plus R equals mid and this is L minus R equals side. If we now turn them on all together, banana, we end up with the exact signing audio, but we just get two different channels that we now can process independently from each other. Everything that is in the middle and everything that is on the sides. Most of the time you will be applying EQ on both. That's why mid side EQ is the most popular. So in parametric EQ, there's no function of making this uh, mid side EQ thing. Hopefully it comes soon. I think they are already working on that. But what we can do is use our favorite patcher. On our side, we have tons of amazing patcher presets. Also with advanced mid side EQs, distortions, pretty much everything you will ever need. Now we'll need to use a tool called Stereo Shaper. And if you ever thought that synthesis and synthesizers are hard to understand, just try to understand this one. Even the FL Studio manual says don't panic, breathe slowly and deeply. It's kind of complicated, but overall what we want to do is put up right channel volume to 50%. Banana. So we only hear the right channel. And then very interesting part is that we take the right channel and start playing it in the left channel, but with inverted phase. What that does is puts it in mono. And the same thing we do with the left channel. And then you end up with right channel subtracted from the left channel. So only our sides, in that case, Apple and Kiwi. And then we just want to make a sidechain output for the difference. And the difference is left plus right, right? And then in Patcher, what we need to do is add another output audio send one. If you load it in, we end up with normal audio. Banana. This is our side. And this is our mid. Banana. Now we want to insert a plugin, fruity parametric EQ, and same thing do here. Just like that. So this is our side, and this is our mid. Of course, inside of Patcher, you have this mid side EQ preset. If you don't have it, then we have a lot of cool presets on our sites. But now we need actual 
use cases for that, and there are many of them. Midside EQ is one of the best tools when it comes to fixing a muddy mix. Muddiness is caused by many factors, and I am in the making of video just about that. However, most common features of that will be actually what we've done in the last video, which was about frequency masking. Everything that we've done in that video, we can now apply into our mid-side EQ. So one of the easiest examples I could find is in our mixing course track. There was just a lot of stuff that we need to figure out and fix. Of course, let's listen. It's not too bad, but then... It's just super messy afterwards. That's why if we combine mid-side EQ together with the concept of frequency masking, we can easily figure out where do we actually need this space. You know our FL Studio Tips mixing box already. The more mono something is, the less space in your mix it takes. So if you have a lot of especially low frequencies on the sides, it will just mess up and muddy up your mix. That's why in our mixing box, you can see that there are practically no low stereo frequencies. The lower you go, the less stereo frequencies you get. That's what we fix with mid-side EQ. Let's make a low cut on our plug bus. See how much of the side we get here. This is our mono and this is our side. How much space do you get instantly? Let's actually hear what we get rid of by simply turning off the mid channel and changing it to low pass. And let's listen before and after. How can you live without mid-side EQ? I don't know, let me know in the comments if you haven't used mid-side EQ yet in your tracks. <laughs> Extremely important. Now, actually, as you remember from our frequency masking video, it just starts right here. What we can do, for example, now, is if we have a lot of mid frequencies here, and cool side because we added reverb on our plaques and we have a lot of side signal as well, You want to get some air into your sights so we can increase a little bit of the presence. Here's our presence. We can increase it a little bit to give sight signal the presence. Pro tip here, if you click here, compare and take it up and now click here, you can check your changes. So we can do that, for example, or in the mid, we can get some of the boomy, boxy frequencies right here. I already used mid-side EQ on the instruments themselves since we mixed that track from Grand Up and not only that track in our full mixing course. Make sure to check it out if you're interested. We go around every single technique and thing you need to know to make amazing sounding mixes. It's packed with knowledge just like our YouTube channel. Another really nice use case of mid-side EQ is on your vocals. Vocals are mostly in mid only, so that will work if you already have some processing applied on the vocal like reverb or you have ad-libs. In our case, we have, for example, Man, they know I ain't playing. I'm so serious about my work. The realest one down here on earth. Been a soldier boy, you know I did it first. So with those ad-libs, you want to give a little bit of the body to the vocal, but you don't want to distract the listener from the main vocal. Man, they know I ain't playing. I'm so serious about my work. The realest one. That's why remembering that the lower we go, the less side frequencies we should have, we can apply apply mid-side EQ on our ad-libs so and get rid of the low body from the sides. Dan, they know I ain't playing. I'm so serious about my work. The realest one down here on earth been a so
So because the alips are going left and right ear all the time, we don't want any of the lower body to be on the left or right. But in the middle, it can give some power to the vocal, especially if those are alips, right? Another cool way is, for example, adding the highs to the alips a little bit like that, but taking down the S sounds by searching for them like this. We take it down. Much cleaner, and that way we won't have any harsh frequencies in the left and the right ear. It can stay in the mix because it just won't screw up our mix that much as side channel, of course. Been a soldier boy, you know I did it first. Ain't nothing sweet, this ain't dessert. I'm coming to get everything I deserve. All I got is my balls and my word, all these scars in my face. This track we built from scratch in our melodic drill course. If you want us to guide you how to make this kind of tracks, write melodies, find the great instruments, mix it and master it all together, make sure to check out the links in the description. Midside EQ also works wonders on drums. Same thing, we can add mid-side EQ. And now I would like to add some of the highs and maybe some of the trebles. That way, if you make this kind of slope without boosting up the trebles like that, you will get a little bit more dirty and professional feel rather than boosting those trebles like that. So now in our drums, we are increasing the side highs. Also, if you have some boxy frequencies, in your site especially, you can find those like this. For example, here. And another wonderful trick is that you can also open the mid channel and boost the frequencies that you have taken down in the side channel. Since more mono an instrument is, more power it actually has in the whole mix. That's something you might want to have. And another mid-side EQ, I think the most popular one, is using it on your master. Take a listen to what's actually happening in this short loop. Let's mute the mono and just listen to what we have in the very lows. we have some toms on the left and right. And it sounds really nice, but it can somehow overwhelm your mix. That's why a subtle, subtle, subtle mid-side EQ on your master like this might just give you overall cleaner master. Since all of your bass and sub are already, I hope, in mono. If you really want on your master, you can also maybe sometimes increase some of the presence. This time, not a lot. Maybe also search for some resonance frequencies that might only be in your side channel. Make sure to scroll through your track in the sides and in the mids with this kind of bell and search for the frequencies that are really, really overwhelming and put them down, let's say, 1 to 2 dB. Of course, people say you should not do it on the master, but as people are in a hurry all the time nowadays, there might just be no other way of doing that. But even on the master, it actually can sometimes save your mix. Let's listen to if I exchange the bass to a different one from our Memoriam Volume 1 pack. And now apply low cuts on the side. Somehow we lose all the very low end. Some people will tell you, okay, now I can bring it back a little bit on my mid channel. something you should not be doing unless you actually know what you're doing. That's why people say there are no rules, but I think there are rules and if you know them all, 
you know how to break them. And what I do, you can see in our mastering video, I basically just roll off the sub because I know that in my mix, I've treated every instrument separately. So I don't need to make very big changes on the midside EQ on my master. If you'd like to learn everything we know and gathered throughout years of experience, check out the first links in the description. We've got so much cool stuff and guarantee you're gonna love it as much as we do. Make sure to leave a comment, like and subscribe to not miss out on future content like this. And I see you in the next video.